I genuinely can't believe this, but we're getting another Terminator 3. Yeah, absolutely, Terminator Dark Fate. But who could forget the other Terminator 3 we had? Well, it's funny you ask, because I just Googled Terminator 3 just, just to make sure. First off, uh, underrated, how do you feel about that? Some, some, somewhat. Uh, great ending? Yes. R okay, boring, corny. All true. <laughs> okay, but what I wanted to... I scroll down a little bit further. It says people also ask, was there a Terminator 3? <laughs> so maybe it's not as memorable so people as people think. people don't even know necessarily, yeah. yeah. Hey, also, if people could leave this video a like, we'd much appreciate it, wouldn't we, Mason? Yeah. That's the real Terminator 3. No, it's not. Did this one do well? I don't even know. It did okay. It was a lot of troubled production stuff. I know Arnold didn't want to do it, and he was like back and forth with James Cameron, I'm like, oh, should I do this? Or, well, nah, should I? Nah. That's my Arnold pers impersonation. Because his think? foot was caught in a bear trap. <laughs> right, exactly, yeah. But Oh my God, his entire career has been based on the, the fact that his foot's been caught in a bear trap. <laughs> I believe it was. I believe it was the most successful technically independent film at the time. Huh. When it came out, yeah. But James Cameron was like, just just make it and ask for a lot of money. And I've got Arnold's perks here for what he, he got oh, for no, this I'm excited movie. to hear about this. He was paid $29 million. Okay. He had a $1.5 million perk package, which included a private jet, security, and gym. He also got 20% of the gross movie receipts made from every market in the world. So he's got 20% everything from DVDs, television lic licensing, wow. in-flight entertainment, game licensing. There was two games based on this movie. Plus he got final say on Director, cast, hairdresser, makeup, physician, stand in, stunt double, cook. And that contract alone cost $2 million to put together for everything. How about this power move? He's like, we will not make this movie unless I get to choose my stand in. And it's like a small Mexican woman. <laughs> it's Danny DeVito. <laughs> it's Danny DeVito. Oh. <laughs> this to me, though, oh, look, I don't hate it. It's, I don't think it's the worst Terminator sequel. But I also feel like it's very much Terminator 2 light. Like, remember yeah. when he went into the bar? Well, what if he went into a slightly different bar? Yeah. Remember glasses? Silly what if he glass. had funny, silly glasses? Funny, glasses. silly glasses. The whole time during this movie, all I could think was, Arnold is wearing tearaway stripper pants. Because he, he must he is, be, yeah, right? Right, yeah. That wouldn't be the only stripper in the world who's like, you know what, today I'm going to use the, I'm going to wear the regular <laughs> leather pants. I'm going to go on stage, work my way out of the leather pants for like 10 minutes. <laughs> Doesn't make any sense. What I do like about this version of the Arnold Terminator is, he is a slightly more advanced version of the T-800. This is a T-850. There's things like, because you know he learns to find keys in the, the sun visor you in part two or whatever. Yeah. And this one, I know it's like a callback, but uh -huh. this one, he he has that inbuilt programming. <laughs> he can he can lie. But I also like that that was the exact machine that killed John Connor in the future. But also, what an idiot John Connor is for a number of reasons. Mm -hmm. First of all, John Connor in the future, if a Terminator approaches you, you wouldn't be like, Oh my god, that's my childhood Terminator. That's my old but friend that <laughs> fell into the into the liquid metal. Remember, remember the molten metal that destroyed him? He's better now. <laughs> and there's also a moment where he's like, Don't you remember anything, the Terminator? And the Terminator's like, Why would you think I'm the same Terminator? Are you kidding me? <laughs> You've seen tens of thousands of these, and one of them was a good guy. Why would you think I'm all... Oh. I think he's also perfect for the role of the Terminator. He kind of always has been for whatever yeah. era mm. the movie is. He's got a bit of comedy in it. I like the bit where he, he talks about how levity relieves tension and fear of death or whatever. I uh -huh. like the bit where he shouts, relax. Relax. <laughs> oh, yep. Yeah, remember that true. moment? Yeah. yeah He's yeah. good. I agree. He was worth that $29 million, in my opinion. Do you think he was? But not all the perks, in my opinion. <laughs> Take the gym away from him. He's had enough. Do you think they should have taken away the hairdresser, makeup person, physician, stand in, stunt double cook, maybe? I thought that was just the one guy. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So apparently, the rumor is, or this is more of a fan theory, that Catherine. Brewster was actually in the mall in Terminator 2. There's a redhead that you see in so the crowd. So that's Claire Danes' character yes. that, that John Connor falls in love with. That's right. Okay, right. You should have brought back redhead guy with the mullet that we all remember. Remember him? And they would repopulate the future together? Yeah, fine, mate. Mate, it's 2019. Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> you can do anything. Yeah, right. I know it's not 2019 in this movie, but it will be eventually. That's right, yeah. That's what I'm saying. What do you think about Nick Star, though, as John Connor? Because I don't feel like they've ever got it right, except that one scene in Terminator 2 where they flash to the future. Oh, and John the guy Connor's with a like, scar. And he's he goes, like 48. And he goes, He doesn't it. say a single word. Mm. I think that's the only good version of adult John Connor we've seen. I think maybe this one was their attempt to be like, ah, uh, the world saviour John Connor is just like you the weird shut in viewer <laughs> and I'm like you're damn right he is so you relate you love him yeah you I love, love getting caught in chicken coops or whatever <laughs> happens in this movie <laughs>
I love breaking into a vet to steal horse tranquilizers. What happens in this? Oh, he falls off his bike. <laughs> yeah. He goes off the grid so he doesn't... I like that idea, though. Yeah, he goes off the grid yeah. so he doesn't have to become, you know, the saviour of humanity. He hopes it'll all just go away. Or if a Terminator comes back, they'll be like, he's not even on the grid. He's so not even in the phone book. I look... our, only, our only method of finding people in this time period. I looked under this sun visor in the car. He wasn't there. Wasn't there. there. <laughs> yeah, and then he falls off his bike and he needs uh, some medical attention so yeah. he goes to the, the vet. Mm -hmm. What do you think of the new Terminator? I think it's a worse model than the T-1000. Absolutely it is. Yeah. It's got the liquid metal, but it can't walk through bars. I mean, it's got a gun in its arm, but get a gun. <laughs> the other guys just got guns. Yeah. You could get a gun too. Absolutely. There's so many guns. <laughs> Remember that time one of them walked into a gun shop and just said, I'm taking all of these guns. And you can't stop me because I'm gunproof. <laughs> and you're not. And the guy was like, fair enough. I mean, I, I guess... I think they would attempted to combine the best traits of the T-800 and yeah. the T-1000. And also, th this version has like... 50 guns in it, but only ever uses two. But also, it can connect to the internet via a dial-up modem. Oh, yeah, pretty it good. It can taste blood and go, this is yum, the blood yum, of yum. somebody I know. How do they have John Connor's blood? It's not important. It's not important, is it? But I guess it makes more sense that with a skeleton, you're more durable to a point until you break the skeleton. I and then see. it's and then it's very much to the detriment of your character. If mm. You've got a broken skeleton inside you. At least with the new one. And <laughs> that, we haven't seen it yet. That works in real life as yeah, well, Yeah, exactly. Think. But at least in the new one, they can operate independently, I guess. I can see how that would be an advantage because mm -hmm. there's two of you, I guess. But in this one, it's like, what if the T-1000, but not as, mm -hmm. not as slick? No, like, golf club claw hammer things. <laughs> yeah, that's that they right. they can hang yeah. in the back of a car with. Also, and I hate this in movies with Unstoppable Killers, where they just throw people they're trying to kill. Does a yeah, lot of right? that. Yeah, right? There's always, in these kind of movies, there's a lot of breaking of the necks or, like, putting a huge knife yeah. through somebody who's not a major character. But when it comes to the guy you're actually there to kill, John Connor... Yeah. Yeah, I'll just throw him. Just throw him. Or mm. Catherine Brewster. Or whoever's. Yeah. The role of the TX, that's what the new Terminator Chris is called. Chris Loken. That's right. Uh, here's some actors that they were thinking of taking on for the role. Okay. Vin Diesel. Wouldn't look as good in that cat suit, I don't think. That's probably true. Gwyneth Paltrow. Probably wouldn't know she was in the movie six <laughs> months after making it. Or during. Yep. Uh, Shaq. Oh, okay. Like, physically similar to Arnold Schwarzenegger. In fact, in towering over Arnold yeah, Schwarzenegger, I Yeah, but I don't I think imagine. that's... He's not, he's not a good actor, is he? I mean, you don't really have to be a great actor. We've only... In fairness, we've only ever seen him in Steel. That's true. Uh, Famke Jensen. Oh, from Goldeneye and the X-Men movies. I don't mind that at all. And the last one is China, the WWF wrestler. Look, I think it doesn't really matter who it is, necessarily. For what they've done here... Yes, for sure. It doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know the bit where Arnold is on a crane and it smashes through a building? Oh, we're, are we up to our segment? You remember that bit, when? Yeah, that's right. Okay, yeah, I remember that. I remember that bit. Yeah. Well, they weren't going to do that originally for real, but Arnold put forth... $1.4 million of his own money. Oh, wow. Which, to be fair, they did get, give to him in the first place. For sure. To do that for real. But I think that scene is for the better for having that bit where it really goes through a building. Yeah. I mean, also, when you see, like, the shot where it's pulled back, it's clearly just, like, a concrete building and they've just built a shop at the front that they oh, can, I see, they can right. smash uh -huh. right through. Yeah. You know, it's cool, like, I like the bit where he kicks over the bloody... Remember this bit? <laughs> where he, yeah. he kicks over the an the ambulance? Oh, yeah. That's Pretty good bad. bit. It's but good there bit. is some CGI in this that I'm like, you've you've extended yourself here where you probably shouldn't have. Give me an example. Uh, the bit where the truck flip. I mean, it was 2003, you had to put a I truck flip in a movie. I remember that bit, where they flipped the truck, yeah. They flipped the truck. I guess I've been spoiled for truck flips since they did it for real in The Dark Knight. Mm. I'm like, that's such yeah. a good truck flip, and I will not accept any other versions. The bit where the Terminator like gets rocket launched through a gravestone. I don't know if you remember that. Oh, I bit. remember that bit, yeah. A bit wonky. The bit where Arnold picks up the TX and like swings her around a toilet block and into a toilet. Oh yeah. Remember so that bit? I remember that bit. Yeah. The bit where his head's dangling on cables. It's not bad, but it's sure, really right. like a, C a CGI head. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's um, it's not unbearable. But it, there's some shots in this where it's like that. You probably could have done that practically, or or not at all. Do something else. Yeah. Make a different movie. Give the money to Arnold. He'll make good use of it. <laughs> he needs it. He'll go to yeah. the gym so many times. <laughs> well, he did though. Well, for this, they reckon that he got the same measurements back that he did for Terminator Two. They're like, can you do this again, Arnold? And he's like, you better believe I can. So you know we're getting the return of Sarah Connor, obviously, Mason, mm. in this new movie. They did ask Linda Hamilton to return for this, and she's like, I'd rather be dead. And they were like, well, we can. We'll <laughs> is that a that. direct quote? No, I don't believe so. <laughs> okay, right. But she was like, this isn't good, and I won't do it. Mm. Which is, you know, not yeah. inaccurate. And then they were like, well, it's sad that Sarah Connor can't be here. She died from farting too hard. <laughs> and all, all and the everybody farts... Everybody laughed. Everybody laughed. And all the farts went into her mouth and she choked to death her own farts. And everybody laughed. They laughed so hard. <laughs> Apparently, though, she revealed in a 2009 interview with MTV that she found the part too insignificant. Also, her character dies halfway through the screenplay 
and there was no time to mourn her. I do kind of like the way they work her into this. Like, she survived till Judgment Day. She kind of battled cancer to that point. Mm. And even then, she was like, just in case, coffin full of guns. Yeah, just right. Just in uh-huh. case, you Yeah, know? for sure. And that imagery of the Terminator with a coffin on mm. his shoulder with a, with a minigun, that's good stuff. It is good stuff. And that psychologist is like, I remember this guy. Oh, yeah. no. Do you think we're going to get a return of him in Terminator 6, number 3, third version of 3? If he's still alive. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> but is he? But you mentioned the the ending up top, and I think my favourite part of this movie is just at the end where they're just like, fuck it, you're all, it's a nuclear war. <laughs> yeah. So what do you think it's about, about again. that? Yeah. What are you going to do about it? You know how you thought there was no fate? Mm. Turns out there's so much fate, and it's, it's all coming at once, and it's today. Surprise yeah. idiots. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and the so Termin- you like that? You like that yeah. twist? Mm. And I like that the Terminator's ultimate plan wasn't like, we got to shut down the main central Skynet yeah, processing right, right. unit. Uh-huh. which may have been the next two sequels. Yeah. Who's to say? Mm. But it was just like, uh, I'll just get you to a bunker and then... Surprise idiots. Surprise <laughs> nuclear war. Well, I mean, I know it goes against Terminator 2, the whole point yeah. of it. Yeah. I feel like the the premise of this was that, you know, it's an ongoing time war and Skynet is going to keep attempting to bring, you know, the war and destroy humanity yeah. or whatever. I think a lot of people took it as like, nah, it's just inevitable. I don't yes. think it is inevitable. I think it's just an it's an ongoing process. I think in this process. movie the exact words are it's probably inevitable yeah, I or something well, like that. Judgment day is inevitable. But, yeah, okay, yeah. But yeah, I like also like that idea of a never-ending kind of time loop, just people just ruining the timeline again and again. Mm. How far back can you go? How many terminators you got and whatever. Oh my god, it's Arnold Schwarzenegger on a penny farthing. <laughs> Look out. <laughs> Uh, there's a few things that uh, this movie is known for. One is Arnold's hilarious commentary. Yeah. Famously, the TX. Yeah. Uh, to to lure a, a, a police officer, I think it is. Yeah. Inflatable boobs. Infl- she's got inflatable <laughs> boobs. Uh, he's, he's got some great commentary about that. Boy, does he? Oh, that's a great idea to check out where the, where you get that done. Because there's some guys that like little breasts, and there's some guys that like big breasts. So he's, wouldn't it be nice if he can play both sides? You know, like, sometimes even simultaneously. A lot of him is just like pointing out things that are happening as they're happening. Mm. Like the moment where he's like, the reason I'm mad in this scene is not because I got hit by a car, it's because... That my sunglasses were damaged because Terminator is hung up on his sunglasses. It's It's good that you understand this character. Mm. (laughs) Do you really... You got to the heart of it, haven't you? The Terminator you? is definitely mad about something, that unfeeling, unthinking machine. What's so weird about that sunglasses thing is, in the first movie, didn't he just put them on because he dug out one of his eyes? That's correct, yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I guess this is a new model. They knew, they programmed in finding keys under a sun visor and loving your sunnies. That's true. It's this, These are the fun in the sun models. Oh, I love you know? it. Uh, and of course, this is a deleted scene, but the Sergeant William Candy. Who could forget? Ah! I'm Chief Master Sergeant William Candy. I like the idea of the template of the Terminator being this real guy that they kind of built it all off and and whatever. I also understand why they didn't put it in the movie because it's dumb. (laughs) <laughs> it's a dumb scene. Well, then it mystifies me why they didn't put it in this movie because a lot of this movie is dumb. Why take out some footage? Yeah, know? good point. But all in all, I don't think this is terrible. It's like a weird parody it's throwback. A self, yeah. It's almost like hot shots to Top Gun it in a way. It is, yeah. yeah. And, I, and I guess the idea was, you know... We, who cares? It's kind of who cares. It's kind of like, well, we know and love the first two and, and we've got to freshen this up. Why not? Well, let's, let's do some self-referential kind of like nods and winks to the audience. Yeah. Yeah. But again, it, it is a movie about nuclear war. Yeah. So that's weird that that would be like nuclear war, but it tear away pants. <laughs> talk to the hand, you know what I mean? Oh yeah, talk to the hand. We didn't even talk about talk to the hand. Well, now we have. Now, of course, this isn't the only Terminator 3. There were actually other Terminator 3s, which we'll be talking about in upcoming Caravan of oh, Garbage. Oh no, yeah, you right. got that's me. That's right. You dog of a bloke. So please subscribe to come back for that. And if you've got a suggestion for Caravan of Garbage, a movie, a comic book, a TV show... Whatever you want, we'll look at it. We also have a podcast called The Weekly Planet where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. We, of course, have an episode coming up on Terminator Dark Fate. Will it be good? I mean... I don't know. You know? I don't know. Terminator 2 is still good. I mean, if, if Dark Fate isn't good, we'll just watch Terminator 2 again. That's right. So. But anyways, I'm at Mr. Sunday Movies on Twitter. I'm at Wikipedia Brown on Twitter. Take care of yourself. Get out there. What can you do? You can do it. That's what I think. Very nice. It's very inspiring. For... Thank you. Uh, grab that gem, you guys. We'll see you next week. Goodbye. Goodbye.